My name is Eric Weinhandel. I'm the director of home dialysis research at the Hennepin Healthcare Research Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Dr. Kevin Griffiths. I'm a member of a two physician practice named Metro Reno Associates in Washington, DC. We service a 900 bed hospital as well as multiple dialysis units in Maryland and DC. The heart disease is often evident uh, in late stages of CKD rather than after dialysis initiation. I mean, we know that, for instance, many people have left ventricular hypertrophy on an echo um, at dialysis initiation. So are you, when you're thinking about advising patients to pursue home hemodialysis, are you targeting that in your CKD clinic, or is that something that you're doing more so after patients have started in center? I have identified patients in our CKD clinic um, that usually are coming in with lower ejection fractions of 40, some are 30, and I start preparing them to say, um, for the best long-term benefit for your health, we think home hemodialysis would do better. Um, the data on heart failure patients is we know that 50% may die within five years. And so with the ability now of doing intensive home hemodialysis, you get to regress that left ventricular hypertrophy and then potentially prolong their existence with us. With heart disease, there's got to be an attention to controlling their volume status. And I feel that with home hemo, the fact that you can do it more often and it controls your volume status much better and there's good clinical data that I've encouraged most of my patients with heart disease to do home hemodialysis. So you do have a lot of experience with uh, heart failure management and dialysis. Um, could you tell me about an interesting case study that you have of a patient with heart failure? About six years ago, this is what really turned me on to home hemodialysis. We had a 52-year-old gentleman, um, poorly controlled diabetic, A1C was about eight or nine. Um, it already had a uh, left uh, BKA uh, amputation and was recently diagnosed in the hospital with an ejection fraction of about 20-25%. Um, he was seeing another nephrologist. His wife knew of our practice and wanted a second opinion because he essentially was written off in terms of there's not much more we can do for this patient and we sh you should make him hospice. His creatinine at that point was four. He was very hypotensive. Um, blood pressures were ranging in the 80s and 90s. And so the other nephrologist at that point didn't feel he could tolerate internal hemodialysis or wouldn't do well. Um, and, and the data really suggested that that's probably accurate. And so when we took over in terms of the consult, we said, we have an opportunity here. You can go down this traditional route and there's a chance you will not do well or you can try this new modality called home hemodialysis where it's much gentler on your body and your pressure won't drop as much and we'll be able to control this volume status, but you gotta be willing to do it. And given his options, which were limited, um, he became motivated and his wife was there with him and they said, let's do it. And I'm happy to report six years later with a, a gentleman who is an EF of 20, 25%, whose mortality was very, chances mortality wise was very limited. He's still with us now and, do, and thriving very well. Actually, they sent me a note. They went to Virginia Beach recently. Um, they were visiting family members and brought their machine down there. So that's the reason why I always felt where home hemodialysis really benefited these low ejection fraction heart failure patients. There's less hospitalization I've seen over the years with this particular patient. And so that's where this HHD really impacts people's lives with heart failure because we really control their volume. And not only did we control his volume, once his volume was controlled, his pressure kind of stabilized, he was able to get his heart failure regimen and he started to do better. His EF started to improve over the years. And so there, there's just added benefit um, with this HHD, with this heart failure population, especially since I see it so often in the Washington DC area. You know, we definitely have, it appears to be, um, a problem with at least pre-dialysis blood pressure measurements. I think one of the challenges in terms of understanding hypertension in the dialysis population is that we lack a lot of population-wide ambulatory measurements. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit how, about how you go about thinking about what is the blood pressure in my home hemodialysis patient? I think the data bears that we should probably keep the blood pressure about 130, 140 systolically. And uh, our first goal is volume. 
um, we, we want to control your volume because the less volume the patient has, the less medication they're going to use. So when I get patients, that's the first thing we do is we want to get you down to your dry weight and we want to push your dry weight even lower if possible. And so with that, since they have their uh, recorded automatic devices and we get their blood pressure, we're, we're seeing if we're getting this. And there's months in clinics, the blood pressure's up the past month because their weight's up. Mm -hmm. The following month when we really push them and say, concentrate on your weight, pressure comes down. So the first step anytime with dialysis patients is volume control. And then we can titrate different medications and once we reach that perfect volume for the patient in terms of their RAS blockade or beta blockers. What's your experience like in the diastolic heart failure population where there's preserved ejection fraction? Do you think that home hemodialysis is potentially less effective or do you find that it's useful there too? It's hard to say the data is still uh, coming with that, the impact on the diastolic heart failure patients, but any kind of modality that we can control volume and pressure on the heart is going to be beneficial. And so it's just a matter of us finding enough data uh, on these patients to see how beneficial it would be. AdvancingDialysis.org is dedicated to providing clinicians and patients with better access to and more awareness of the reported clinical benefits and improved quality of life made possible with home dialysis, including more frequent, more intensive, and nocturnal therapy schedules. All forms of hemodialysis, including treatments performed in center and at home, involve some risks. In addition, there are certain risks unique to treatment in the home environment. Patients differ, and not everyone will experience the reported benefits of more frequent hemodialysis. Certain risks associated with hemodialysis treatment are increased when performing nocturnal therapy due to the length of treatment time and because therapy is performed while the patient and care partner are sleeping. AdvancingDialysis.org is a project of Next Stage Medical Incorporated.